In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in order to use Helm, which is a free open source synthesizer. You can download it and use it on PC, Mac, or Linux, and you can use it as a VST inside any DAW or as a standalone synth if you prefer. Let's get straight into it. All right, so I'm gonna skip over how to go about downloading and installing this synth. I will say though that I did mention this is a free synth, and that's true, it is a free synth to download. However, they do recommend that you do so, some sort of donation when you download it, and I would recommend that you, you know, donate a little bit of something something if you plan on actually using the synth and especially if you plan on, you know, selling your music or something like that. But that's totally up to you. Before we get too far into the tutorial, uh, there is another thing I want to mention, and that is that I'm going to be talking about some sound design stuff that may be a little bit complicated if you're brand new to sound design. And so if you're getting confused about anything that I'm talking about in this tutorial, I recommend that you check out my Introduction to Synthesis and Sound Design series. I'll be sure to leave a link to that in the description of this video, as well as on the screen now, if you wanna go ahead and click over to that if you're brand new to sound design. That's gonna give you at least a fundamental understanding of sound design and some of the different things that I'm talking about in this tutorial. Now, having said all that, let's go ahead and get straight into Helm. This is what it looks like by default when you first load it up. So if we click on this blue logo up here, we do have a little bit of information displayed. You can see who it's developed by, the version, and you can animate graphics or check for updates. And then we can also change the window size if we want. So we could go super big, uh, 135, 100%, which is what it's set to now, and then 75%, which makes it a little bit smaller. Next to that, we do have a place where we can click pretty much anywhere here and check out some different presets that they have. I don't wanna waste any time auditioning all these presets in this tutorial, so if that's what you're looking for, this is definitely not the video. I'm sure there are other YouTube videos on there where you can hear some different presets, or you can just download it for free check it out that way. But anyway, we can exit by hitting that button or honestly just clicking anywhere. Now, once we've picked a preset, if we wanna go back to an initialized preset, which is just giving us a blank slate, I can just right click here and then load initialized preset. So now I'm back to a default preset, which in this case is our sawtooth wave. Uh, you can see the oscillators here are both set to saw. So let's actually go ahead and just start with our oscillator section. So you can think of our oscillator section as being this whole area here. This is oscillator one, this is oscillator two. We can change the waveform by clicking on it, or there's this thing up here you can drag. So all the way to the left is our sine wave. I can do that on both. And then I can click, you can see our triangle wave, square wave, sawtooth, another sawtooth. This is just with the phase inverted. And then as you continue to scroll through here, we have some other interesting shapes as well. So those are our different wave shapes that we have access to here. You notice in the middle here, we have this mod knob, and this is a way to change the timbre of the oscillators. So the left oscillator modulates the phase of the right oscillator, and the right oscillator modulates the tone of the left oscillator. So we can kind of hear this. <laughs> Now by default, both oscillators are playing at the same volume. And if I wanted to only have, let's say oscillator one playing, then I actually have to do that down here in our mixer. So I can turn this all the way down. And now I just have oscillator one playing. And then these knobs should be pretty obvious. We have a tune knob. So that changes the pitch in sense. If you ever wanted to snap back to the default setting, you can right click and go to set default value, or we can just hit alt and then left click and it'll set it back. You can kind of see that. So then next to that, we have a transpose knob, which is gonna be the same thing. It's just gonna be in semitones. So this gives us more flexibility over the tuning of it. Uh, so I can go up 12 semitones, which is an octave, all the way up to 48 semitones, which is four octaves. Now let's say we wanted to make a super saw. So let me go ahead and go to our sawtooth. And right here, we have a number of voices. So it's set to one by default. So I can bring this up, let's just make it, I don't know, 15 voices. And then here's the unison and synths. So this is how you control the detune. So we get a nice little super saw there. Now something interesting to point out is that down here, we do have some settings which control sort of the global settings here. So right now this is actually set to four voices, which actually what this means is that Helm is only outputting four voices. So if I really wanted to output 15 voices, then I'd set that to 15. So then let's go in here and we'll go ahead and make this a sawtooth wave as well. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in oscillator two a little bit here. So you can kind of hear that coming in. And then let's bring this down an octave. So negative 12 semitones. 
So now we got a pretty full sounding super saw there. Maybe I could get rid of a little bit of this volume. <laughs> Okay, cool. And then we also have a sub down here as well. And the sub works the same way. So if I wanted a sine wave sub, I bring that over to the left like that. And then I just bring the sub in. And I can click this to bring it down another octave. All right, cool. So let's move on to our feedback. This is another way to just sort of change the tone of the sound. We can change the tune. And then I can also transpose, so. So we can get some different sounds out of that. Let's go ahead and go through these effects real quick as well. We'll start up here with the ARP. We have a frequency. And then we can change the octave. So we can do one octave, two octaves, three octaves, four octaves. Anyway, that's pretty straightforward. I'm not really gonna spend too much time on that. Same thing with stutter. It's a very similar layout. And then we also have this resampling, which is what you hear when the tone changes. So we can change the, the sampling speed there. And then we also have a softness knob here as well. So that's all pretty straightforward. Again, distortion is gonna be pretty straightforward. We have a soft clip option, we have a hard clip option, we have a linear fold option, and we have a sign fold option. And then we have a drive knob and a mix knob. This is just controlling the dry wet of the uh, signal, the amount of distortion going into it. So delay, another very straightforward effect. We again have our frequency. Let's move this to like, I don't know, one fourth. Pretty common delay speed. So this controls the feedback amount. So bring it in somewhere there and then this controls the mix. So I don't know, maybe we'll leave that. Just a tiny bit of delay on there. Why not, we'll leave that. And then let's, let's mess with the reverb as well. Uh, this is another straightforward one. We have a feedback, a damping, and a mix. So again, mix is the dry wet. Damping, you can kind of hear what happens here. And then feedback. I'll leave that off for now. And then the last effect that we have here is this formant. So it's going to be a little hard to kind of hear exactly what this is doing with the particular sound that I'm using now, but this is gonna be an E sound. This is gonna be an ah. This is gonna be an eh. And this is gonna be an O. Oh. So this is, you know, giving it sort of a talking effect. And if we're into dubstep, you know, making some dubstep sounds, uh, then we can modulate the formant to get some pretty creative and, and cool sounding stuff. So let's move on to our filter. Uh, go ahead and turn this on. So we don't really have a lot of filter options to, to choose from in this synth. It's basically just a low pass, high pass, and band pass filter. And we can control it by literally clicking on this and dragging it wherever we want. Uh, you can see these knobs are moving, so I can use these to change it. And then I can switch the filter by going like that. So this would be obviously high pass filter. And then we have our low pass. And then we can change the slope. So right now we're on 12, this is 24. And then we also have a shelf option here as well. Uh, so we can do a notch filter. So we have a drive knob here, and then we also have an envelope depth knob. Now this is linked to our filter envelope here. So if I bring this up, you can kind of hear, it's basically going to enable this filter envelope, and then whatever shape we have going on here is gonna be what it sounds like essentially, so. And then you can mess with the attack to case, sustain, and release to come up with what you like. Uh, you can also use these knobs here. So I'm gonna leave this at zero because I don't really want that right now. Now, our amplitude envelope, which is next to our filter envelope, this is our normal envelope section, if you will. So again, I can mess with the attack to case sustain release and it's gonna be linked to the global volume or amplitude of the synth. 
So if I bring the sustain down, So let's say I want to actually link this to the filter. So I can actually use the mod envelope for this as well. It just, it's an extra envelope for us to use if you need it. But in this case, I'll just use the amplitude envelope because I just created this shape. So I can click on this symbol here, which is going to highlight everything that you can link it to. So anything that's green, you can basically map this to that now. So what I want to do is map it to this filter so that it kind of swells a little bit as it, as it opens up. So I'm gonna click this here and just drag it. You can kind of see how much is happening. I'll, just, I'll try right in there. We'll see what happens. I don't know how I feel about the delay. So that's how you map stuff in the synth. So we talked about our envelopes. Let's go ahead and move on to our LFO. Uh, we have three LFOs to work with here and LFOs are obviously standard to all synths. You map them in the same way. You can click this and then we can root it to, let's do, I don't know, the tune of this. We'll give it a little bit of wobble. Give it kind of some retro vibes. Maybe that's a little bit too much, so I'll bring this down. So whenever you're done mapping something, make sure that you click this button again. So uh, I'll bring this up a little bit. Okay, pretty cool. And then obviously we have a couple different LFOs to work with here. Now we also have a step sequencer. This works in a similar way to the LFO. So I can map this to, let's do the filter envelope again. I'll just bring this all the way up. And then here, let me undo that and I'll do something like this. Let's bring this a little bit faster. Obviously you can mess with the step sequencer however you want and come up with some pretty cool stuff. So I really don't want that. So I'm gonna right click here and clear modulation. Now this section here is the keyboard mod. This is our MIDI section. So I'm not gonna to touch on this in this tutorial. So if you're trying to figure out how to link MIDI stuff, you can check out the manual. They have the manual on the website or you can try and find another tutorial. We sort of talked about this section a little bit. I, I mentioned the voices. Uh, we also have a pitch bend, which this has to do with how much pitch bend we're enabling. And this has to do with the pitch wheel. We also have the velocity track, which this has to do with how hard you hit a key, determining how loud it sounds essentially. So we can change the sensitivity of that with the velocity tracking there. And then over here we have a portamento effect. So this is, you know, your slide effect. You can turn it on. Here, I'll bring this up. So that gives it that slide effect. We can also click this button here, which will make it so that it only happens when you're holding down one note and sliding up to another note. Um, so if I just go, it's normal, but. So that's a nice little feature there. You have the option to toggle that on or off, but that's about it for this tutorial. I think I've covered everything that's important that you need to know about this synth. Be sure to hit the like button and throw a comment in the comment section if you like this video. It helps the YouTube algorithm think that this is a good video and potentially recommend it to more people. So do that and let's roll the outro. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm doing tutorials about once a week and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday so keep an eye out for that if you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests feel free to hit me up on Instagram at another monster one also if you feel like you're really struggling with music production sound design anything in between and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help I am doing one-on-one -on -one private lessons which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.